Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and finally I have seen this movie. It has been all this month, this is all I have been looking forward to, is seeing this movie. And, uh, by the way guys, I saw two movies today, so um, you're going to get two back-to-back -back reviews. So we're going to start off with the first movie, and that movie is my most anticipated movie probably the entire year, honestly. I have been looking forward to this movie since they announced it. Since they showed the first trailer, I have been looking forward to this movie. And that movie is Into the Woods. Finally, I have seen this movie. Now, of course, you guys know why I'm looking forward to this movie. It's a musical. That's why. And you guys know me with musicals. I get hyped up. I get excited. When they're done right, not like Annie, which we all know how that turned out. But when they're done right, like, you know, when they're actually done right and stick to the source material, then they turn out very, very well. Now, let's talk about the central plot. Uh, now, um, I finally saw this movie, and overall, what did I think of Into the Woods? You know, I was very happy I finally saw it. And overall, what did I think of Into the Woods? Into the Woods, in my opinion, is a masterpiece. I love this movie. I think it is a fantastic movie. And I know a lot of people have complaints with it, but I'm going to talk about why I don't actually have any complaints with this movie. I expected to. I did expect to have some complaints with this movie, but really, I didn't. And let's talk about the central plot of Into the Woods. For me, this is actually a two-part plot. First of all, the, the first half of this movie kind of is your typical fairy tale. However, we do have one story, and that is that we focus on this baker and his wife. Now, for whatever reason, they cannot have a child. And eventually, you're told by a witch that they cannot have a child because the baker father um, went into the witches, you know, um, when he, when his wife was pregnant, he, you know, his wife was very demanding, and she wanted all these, like, vegetables and everything, and very, you know, a lot of stuff, so he went into the witch's garden, pretty much, and started to basically steal from her, and this put a terrible curse on her, and a curse on their family, where they cannot have children, but the witch makes them a deal. She's like, all right, you bring me these four things, then you can have a child. She wants them to bring um, the cow as white as milk, the, um, let me find, okay, the, the, the cow as white as milk, the hair as pure as gold, the cape as red as blood, and the, sl and the, um, the slipper, uh, no, it was the hair as white as corn and the slipper as pure as gold. Those, those are the four things. Um, in the movie. So basically, they go on this quest and everything to find these objects, and the witch, you know, they have to, they, they have to get them because the witch cannot touch them and everything. Well, meanwhile, there are other stories going on. Um, someone is calling me. I have no idea who that is. Um, somebody, but somebody is calling me right now, and I have no idea who is calling me right now. So I'm just going to, yeah. But basically... Um, we have four other stories going. You have the story of Laura Ryan here, the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, the story of Rapunzel and Cinderella, and they all kind of intertwine together, and eventually the movie becomes more about the consequences that these characters make, and that's basically the plot of Into the Woods. Now, one of the things that I was definitely really looking forward to in this movie is that this is a music, this is a Broadway musical. And one of the things that is always very important for me is the acting, and I think that's really what made this movie so good, is all of the acting in this movie is absolutely fantastic. I don't think anyone's giving a bad performance. I think everyone did a really good job. But let's talk about the highlights of this movie. First of all, Meryl Streep as the witch. She needs applause because she was fucking amazing. I loved her as the witch. She was perfect. She, by far, gave the best performance in the movie. She was fantastic. She was amazing. Every song she did, she handled perfectly. She perfectly handled the character who isn't actually a bad person. That's something I like about this movie, is that the witch is not actually a bad person. It's just she had this very bad curse on her. She's very annoyed. She did a lot of bad things, definitely. I mean, she stole, um... She stole the baker's, you know, she stole the baker's sister, and you can definitely see that she really wants to, you know, be a good person and everything, and she's very, very powerful and everything, and all her magic, and I really like the way she portrayed things. She was also very, very funny at points, especially in the first half of this movie, she's very funny. Um, the, the points where the witch um, comes up, there's this one point where the baker's wife and the baker are arguing, and the witch is like, who cares? And I thought that was an awesome entrance. Also, the witch's entrance in this movie is just awesome. I thought the way she entered was awesome, and I thought she was just amazing in the movie. Her singing voice as well. Meryl Streep, I always knew she could sing. I mean, Mamma Mia, that's an okay movie, but she's the best thing about that movie. And in this movie, 
finally she actually gets to shine and she did an amazing job throughout this entire movie especially with her singing voice and i definitely feel that she needs to win the oscar for best supporting actress because she is absolutely fantastic in this movie and i loved her character um emily blunt as the baker's wife her character i thought she was also fantastic you know you can definitely see um how much she cares about the baker, how much she wants to help him with this, and I thought she did a very good job, definitely, you know, she, I didn't actually know she could sing as well as she could, and she was a fantastic singer, definitely, I really loved her performance in the movie, and then James Corden as the baker, there's a bit of a different thing they did with his character, originally in the musical, they have an unnamed narrator who eventually is revealed to be his father in the musical, but what they do in here is they have the baker be the narrator, now I'll talk about why that happens in the spoilers, I actually thought that was very cool that they did that, and I thought James Corden Gordon did an amazing job in this movie. He really handled a lot of things very well. He was very funny in the first half. He handled, but I think the thing that he handled the best was emotion. He had such great emotion in this movie. There's something that happens to the Baker that we'll talk about in the spoilers because it's a major spoiler if you guys have not seen the movie. But there's something that happens to him that I thought he did an amazing job with. And especially in the second half of this movie, he just got amazing. And I thought he did an amazing, I mean, the third, like, the third half of this movie, he just got amazing. I thought he did a great, great job. Love loved his performance. Um, Anna Kendrick as Cinderella. I wasn't expecting much from her, and she did a very good job with this role. You really believe that she was Cinderella, and she really got into that character, and I think that's what every, everyone in this movie did that. Everyone in this movie really got into that character, but she really portrayed the character Cinderella perfectly, and I thought one of the things I love about these uh, fairy tale characters is they actually start to question themselves. You know, Cinderella is always questioning herself, should she go off with this prince? You know, she isn't really sure if, because it's different in this. It's not that she goes to a ball. There's, there's this prince that's having a fet you know, the king's having a festival, and the prince is there, and she keeps running off, but every time she does, she's not really sure if she should try to talk to him, what she really thinks of him, if she initially wants this, and I thought they did that very well, the way they questioned I definitely really loved that they did that, and I think that was a very good, um, care, and the thing I loved about Anna Kendrick was she really, you know, got into the role of a princess very well, but I did like in the movie that they said, you know what, Cinderella really is not a princess. You know, she didn't really think she was a princess. She didn't think she was all glamorous and everything. And I thought that was very good with her character. And I think Anna Kendrick handled that very well. You know, she wasn't hamming it up or anything. She wasn't cheesy. I thought she did a very good job. And I thought she was definitely very good. Um, Chris Pine as Cinderella's prince. Oh my god, he had me laughing hysterically. I thought he was one of the people that stole the show in this movie by far. He was absolutely hilarious. Honestly, I feel he should be nominated for Best Supporting Actress, because, uh, actor, I mean, because he is absolutely hilarious. What they do with the princes in this movie is they kind of make, he's basically a jerk. He's not a nice guy. I'm just going to say that right now. This guy, he is not a nice guy in any way, shape, or form. He's not a nice guy. He basically is just being portrayed as a jerk who sleeps around with a bunch of princesses and he was he really handled that all very very funny i loved his line that's like i was raised to be charming not sincere and i thought he did a great job with that got his performance in that song agony was absolutely hilarious to watch and I really love what they did with his character. You know, he could definitely, he definitely had a lot of fun with it. Out of everyone, I really think Chris Pine was having the most fun. I, it really seems like he was. Everyone seemed like they were having a lot of fun, but it really seemed like Chris Pine was having a lot of fun with this, and he definitely did a great job, and I love seeing his role in the movie. Um, Lila Crawford as Lord Riding Hood. Not a lot of people have talked about her, but I've always liked Lila Crawford. She was in, um, a couple years ago, the Broadway musical of Annie, you know, the revival of Annie. And she was very good there, but she is really good in this role as Laura Ridinghand. And another thing I really like about her character is she also starts to question herself. You know, she sees this wolf, and she doesn't really think anything of it, but then she thinks... Am I going to do this to other strangers? Am I going to think of this? And I thought that was well done that she did that, definitely. I definitely really enjoyed that. And I thought Lila Crawford did that very well. She also has a very nice singing voice. Um... Daniel Huddleston as Jack, yes, that is the guy that played Gavroch in Lame as a Rob, which was actually the first movie I reviewed uh, ever, and any, the first thing I ever reviewed on this channel. But Daniel Huddleston as Jack I thought was very good, I thought he did a very good job. Um, not amazing, but I thought he still did a very good job in the movie, I really enjoyed his character. Um, Mackenzie Mozzie as Rapunzel was 
amazing. I was surprised by how good she really was because she's actually the the um, sister of the baker who the witch has taken. And I like that they did this story of, you know, the witch really wants to be a mother to her. She actually really does want to provide for her. It really makes us care more for the witch. I really like when we see, I mean, the song Stay With Me really is the part where we actually start to care for the witch and we actually see why she's doing what she's doing because she wants to be a mother to Rapunzel. But Rapunzel doesn't think of her that way. Rapunzel thinks of her as this evil creature who's holding her hostage. I thought they portrayed that very, very well, and I definitely really love the very difficult relation between the witch and Rapunzel. Um, Christine Baranski as C Cinderella's stepmother, always love her. Tammy Blanchard and Lucy Punch as Cinderella's stepsisters were great. And I think the only other person I really want to talk about is Billy Magnuson as Rapunzel's prince. He had nothing to do in the movie, but he still was very funny. The number he did with Chris Pine, Agony, I thought was very, very funny. And I definitely really enjoyed that. All right, that's all the acting. I know it took a very long time, but they're... Oh, how do I forget? How can I forget Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp... Okay, you guys probably think Johnny Depp has a lot to do in this movie. I'm going to warn you guys, he has five minutes of screen time in this entire movie. Now, does it bother me? No, it does not bother me, because his character really does not need to be there. But for what he did, I thought he was very, very good in this movie, because basically, a lot of people are saying, you know, he's he's supposed to, he's coming across a child predator. That's the point of his character, is that his character is supposed to represent a child predator, and I think that was handled very, very well, and I definitely really enjoyed that. I think Johnny Depp did a good job. Yes, it kind of seemed like he thought he was in a Tim Burton movie, but... Um, I thought he still did a very good job. I mean, Johnny Depp can still act. When you give him good source material, he can act very well, and that's something I... Now, that really goes to the directing by Rob Marshall. He really respected the source material. Now, the directing by Rob Marshall, you can't really say too much about it, because I don't know if you guys know this, but Stephen Sondheim was actually the person that was most dedicated to this. He made sure things stayed intact. He made sure what stayed intact, He because he was worried that things were going to go away, and I like that Stephen Sondheim took a lot of control of this. Now, now, something that I like that Stephen Sondheim did is he, he didn't want to show a lot of the really violent and, you know, because this is a very violent, dark musical, especially in the second half. And in the music, in the actual musical, it gets pretty dark and pretty adult, actually. So what he did was he didn't show any of it on screen. And I think it was good that he did that because he wanted kids to be able to to say to see it i think you know I, I think he did a very good job with that he wanted kids to be able to see this movie basically you know he wanted kids to be able to see it so they could learn the lessons now that makes sense because Grimm's fairy tales the fairy tales that this movie focuses on were originally meant to teach children a lesson and this movie does that as well and i'll talk about that in the spoilers the screenplay was great songs were amazing this movie has such amazing music when i was done with this movie i could not get that song stuck out of my head you know into the woods go out of the woods. I could not get that out of my head. Um, if you guys don't like music stuck in your head, don't watch this movie, but the music by Stephen Sondheim is just amazing. Cinematography, this is some of the best cinematography of the year, by far. Some of the best cinematography I have seen all year. I think the cinematography in this movie was fantastic. The woods looked fantastic. They actually looked very dark and very scary. I think they did a great job with that. I know it's probably green screen, but it was still very good. Editing was great, too. Now, a lot of people complain about the third half of this movie, and we're going to talk about the editing right now, and we're going to talk spoilers right now, because a lot of people talk about the editing and have complaints with it. Now, we're going to talk big spoiler shows. So if you guys have not seen Into the Woods, don't watch the rest of this review because I'm going to actually make some very good points here. And if you guys have seen it and don't actually really like the third half, I'm going to say what I actually think the third, why I actually really like the third half of this movie. Now, of course, they try to make it seem like the movie's over. You know, they say it's happily ever and then it cuts away. Now, I like this because what this is trying to show is we don't... Now, let me say something here. Think about these fairy tales. We don't know what happens after the words happily ever after. We don't actually know what happens. Does Cinderella end up happy with the prince? We don't know. Does little, you know, does Laura Riding Hood still talk to strangers? We don't know. Does um, Rapunzel, you know, end up happy with the... Does Rapunzel end up happy with the prince? We don't know what happens to her. You know, does she stay in the woods? Does she get rescued? Like, do, we don't really know what happens to her. Um, do the baker and his wife, you know, the baker and his wife do get the kid, but do they stay happy? What happens to them? And the second half of this movie, you know, the third half of this movie focuses on the consequences of what the characters have done earlier in the movie. I think that's very well done, what they do. Because it shows that every single thing you do has a consequence. And this movie shows that very, very well. It's very thought-provoking, actually. It really made me think about a lot of things. I mean, think about it. The baker and his wife's kid, for example. Their kid. Um, that was done because of a wish. But, of course, that wish 
makes them go through some pretty bad shit. You know, the earthquake happens, and of course, finding, you know, help, finding, um, taking the cow and everything, and getting Jack to, you know, Jack killing the giants, made the second giant appear, and that killed his mother. And I actually really like that twist, because what that does is it really shows the consequence of what happens when you give into temptation. And Jack did that. And the baker and his wife, I mean, I'm gonna say personally, everyone in this movie does something bad. Every single character in this movie does something they regret. Cinderella and the prince do not end up happy at all. The prince ends up flirting with um, the baker's wife, of course, and the baker's wife, you know, is like, what was that and everything? Emily Blunt, that scene was just hilarious. Chris Pine was great as well. But then, of course, the baker's wife ends up getting killed by the giant. You know, she ends up, the giant ends up killing her and everything. She falls off a cliff and everything. And, um... I was surprised that the movie went that far. Now, a lot of people say it was very underwhelming. I thought it was good we didn't see it off screen because it was better to see the baker's reaction. You know, the baker at first, like, my wife is dead. He kind of doesn't really think about it. But then the characters are thinking, wait a second. So the giant killed the baker's wife. Why should we kill th this giant? Because the giant is a person, too. And I thought that was very well done because... Again, the characters are second guessing themselves, and probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when is when you know Lower Ryan says maybe I shouldn't have strayed from the pack. Cinderella says maybe I shouldn't have gone to the festival. Um, and again, remember these are all things they wished for. These are all the things that they wanted. But the whole point of this movie is be careful what you wish for because everything has a consequence. And I think with the witch destroying herself now, at first I didn't understand why the witch destroyed herself, but now I do because the witch realized that. She's actually the cause of this, you know, them asking for these wishes and she giving them to them has caused this. And even though it's made her happy, everyone else is not happy. So it, it really is everybody's fault, but the witch destroying herself really does make sense. Now, of course, the ending. When we find out that the baker has been telling this whole story to his child, I thought that was genius because... I was wondering, why is the baker narrating this movie? Oh, that's why. Because the baker is telling the whole story to his child. And it really makes sense. Especially, now a lot of people are wondering, why don't he even talk about the witch or the ba or you know, um, the wolf or anything? Why doesn't he talk about them? Because now, Cinderella, Lua Riding Hood, and Jack are going to live with him. So obviously, he's going to talk about them. And I thought that was very well done. Now, the movie does have a very dark message of we're all going to die. And I don't think that's the central message of this movie. I think what that's trying to show is you need to get over grief. And we all suffer some kind of trauma in our life. A lot of people think that, you know... This movie has to do with an AIDS crisis because it was made in 1984 when AIDS was going on. Now, I think that was, I don't know if that was the original intent. I think what Stephen Sondheim was trying to show is that we all deal with certain problems in our life. We, there's no happily ever after. There is no such thing as a happily ever after. And it makes this movie a lot more realistic. And it makes you like this movie a lot. It makes you care about it more. And it definitely made me care about this movie a lot more. And I think he did a very good job with doing that. And yes, the third half of this movie, it does get pretty dark. Did it get boring? Now, I will say this. When the movie first changed tones, it was like, I don't know about this. But then, when we got into it, I'm like, okay, I actually really like this. I think I like where this is going. I mean, it still had that same comedic tone until the baker's wife died, then it completely changed. Did I have a problem with that? No, because the movie handled it very, very well. And I think if you're into the first two halves of this movie and you focus enough and you really think about it, it really does make sense to have the third half in there. Because if, let me ask you guys a question. And I think you guys are going to, you know, think about this. I don't know if you guys are thinking about this. I don't know if you guys care, but I'm going to ask this question. If the third half of this movie was not in there, would you be satisfied with the first two halves of this movie? Me? No, I wouldn't be. I don't want a fun movie. I want a movie that show that it, I, you know, first of all, that's what they do in the musical. And I know you guys are saying what they do in the musical is not the same in the movie. It works in the movie, in my opinion. The actors work. The characters work. And that's the thing that I think worked with this movie is that I cared about the characters. I really did. And if you don't care about the characters, you're not going to like the third half of this movie. But if you really do care about the characters like I did, then you're going to love this entire movie because... That's the thing, is that I really got into these characters. I really got into how they thought, you know, their thought process and things like that. I thought that was very well done, and I think they really showed that perfectly, and I definitely really enjoyed that. And, of course, the last song, Children Will Listen, is the perfect way to end this musical because, of course, the whole movie is about people not listening to other people. You know, this is not going to turn out well for you and things like that, but... 
Of course, um, you know, the ending is James is the baker saying to his child, and I thought that was actually a very good way to end the movie. Um, seeing the baker's wife again, I thought that was really well done as well, because, you know, obviously he's gonna think about her. He loved her more than anything, and he realized that, you know, remember, when they were on that journey together, they decided that they were gonna work together. They decided that they were gonna do this as a team. And, of course, obviously he's going to envision her, so that obviously does make sense why he envisioned her. Um... And then, of course, us hearing the witch, that makes sense as well. And I thought the movie overall just ended very, very well. And I didn't have a problem with the way the movie ended at all. I, I loved the entire movie. Because, again, it's all about the problems and consequences that come from wishes. So I definitely really love that. And I think that worked perfectly, in my opinion. Something that I think the movie did very, very well. But that's basically my review of Into the Woods. I know this was a very, very in-depth review. I know I talked way too much about way too much stuff in this movie. Um, but I'm just, please see this movie, guys. Please see it. It is an amazing movie. It is pro it's by far one of the best movies of the year. I was surprised by how much I love this movie. One of my favorite movies of the year by far. Maybe, probably my fifth favorite, honestly. Um, I think it's probably that high. I would honestly put it that high. I was into the story. I was into the characters. I was into the movie the entire time. I really got into the story. Um, I keep saying into, and this movie's called Into the Woods. That's, that's unintentional, guys. I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, I think this movie is very, very good, and I highly recommend you check it out. Great songs. The, the music's gonna get stuck in your head like crazy, and I definitely really loved it. Now, is it the best musical I've ever seen? No, it's not the best musical I've ever seen. I do think Les Miserables is a bit better than this. You know, I do think that is a bit better, but this still is a very good musical. I still really enjoyed it. I watched it again. It still is one of my favorite movies of the year, and that's it for my review. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in my next video. As I told you guys, I saw two movies today. I'm going to review the second one. Um, I wasn't initially planning on watching it, but I decided to, and I will see you guys for my next review. Okay. Bye. Also, let me know what you guys think of this movie. What did you think of what I said about this movie? I, I kind of say this as an analysis, honestly. Uh, sort of. I, I don't know, but... Um, what do you guys think of what I said about the second half of this movie? Because honestly, think if you really think about it, the third half needs to be in there. If you really think about it. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.